We've done the first four, the four horses. We've summarized it. We brought it together. We've, we've related it. We've done a parallel to the parable mm -hmm. or a parable parallel. <laughs> and so now we're in the fifth seal. And we're, it's going to continue. It's not like we're leaving the others behind. They're connected. There's a connectivity here because the history connects. Yeah. And then, of course, the history informs us for today. So it's a beautiful picture overall. So as we get into this, uh, let's start with a word of prayer, Jason, and then um, Yvonne, if you can read the verses for us, and then we'll just jump right in. Ivor will just give us the interpretation. Sure. <laughs> All right. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we ask that you be with us as we study your word. Uh, help us to uh, fully understand what we are mm. studying and to be able to retain the information. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. The fifth seal, Yvonne, starts in verse 9 of Revelation 6. Yes. And, we'll and how, to, how far? To 11. To 11. Okay. Yeah. Through 11? Yep. Okay. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Amen. These are some powerful verses. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we see in the beginning of this picture in verse 9 is the altar. Yeah. And we know that that altar either represents the altar in the courtyard of the sanctuary system or the altar that was in the holy place of the sanctuary system. Because it's not called the golden altar, the golden altar was the one that was in the holy place. We're inclined to understand that as being the one in the courtyard. But verse 2 actually helps us out with that because verse 2 says that the souls that are crying under the altar are crying out for vengeance on them that dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. So this has to do with the earth. And the only altar that has anything to do with the earth is the one in the courtyard. Mm. Does anyone remember what that altar represents in the plan of salvation? What happened at that altar in the Jewish service that pointed forward to something that happened in the plan of salvation? What was that altar all about? That's where the lamb was slain. That's where the lamb was slain. Mm -hmm. So what would that represent? The crucifixion. The crucifixion. Mm -hmm. and, and Hebrews chapter 13, verses 10 through 12 tells us that. Paul says, we have an altar that they have no right to eat at, which served the temp tabernacle because Jesus was sacrificed outside the gate. Mm. So he's taking that altar and he's saying that altar represents where Jesus was sacrificed for our sins. Mm -hmm. So when it says that these guys, that we heard them under the altar, it doesn't mean that they're under a literal altar. It doesn't mean that they're in the literal sanctuary in that, you know, place that was set up for God. It doesn't and it doesn't mean that they're in heaven. And does, it definitely doesn't mean they're in heaven. It's telling us, it, yeah, exactly. it's telling us that this happened on the earth and that altar represents the cross. So what that means is these people died for Christ. Mm, these are martyrs. These are martyrs. Mm. These are people that, that in, in, in and that, that's the context of this. These are people that gave their life because they refused to give up their faith in Christ. They held to the cross. They held to Calvary. They held to the blood right? Mm -hmm. They didn't go with the pale horse. Mm. They didn't go with the black horse. Mm. They didn't compromise. They weren't persecuted out. They held to the blood. They held to the lamb mm -hmm. slain that was opening the seals. Mm -hmm. They held to the lamb that was white, that white horse rider. All right, what else do we have in here, Ivan? I think it's interesting that uh, the Bible, you know, points out here that they were uh, slain, uh, verse... Uh, I believe it's nine. Nine. Mm -hmm. They were slain for the word of God. Yes. The word of God. Whoa. The word of God. Yes. Right. And for the testimony which they held. So mm -hmm. put those two things together: word of God and testimony. It reminds mm -hmm. us of uh, the commandments of God. Those who keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus Christ or the mm -hmm. testimony of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But remember where these seals are unfolding. They're unfolding at the table of showbread. Mm -hmm. So the mention here of the word of God within this context, again, just reaffirms to us that these are events that are, sur that are surrounding the table of showbread, the word of God, mm -hmm. and this battle uh, for Satan to attempt to get the mount of the congregation, mm -hmm. God's people, mm -hmm. to separate from the word of God. Mm -hmm. But here you have a group of people who are saying, yeah, just, just uh, you know, you might as well go ahead and take my life because I'm not going to let go of the word of God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to let go of the blood of Christ, of the mm -hmm. testimony of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the interesting thing. If we take the fifth sin, you guys should already be like, yeah, I know where, where, where he's going next. Because mm -hmm. so if we take the fifth seal, mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. and we want to know how can we check what you know what we're looking for here we would time frame. want to go time frame we would go over go back to the fifth church church mm -hmm. and the fifth church is the church of sardis that is the church of the reformation mm -hmm. and we understand that under the sardis church people were being persecuted because of the word of god mm -hmm. so when we're what we're looking at here primarily is that period of time uh, that, that points us to the Protestant Reformation mm -hmm. uh, and those who are being persecuted through this Reformation. Mm -hmm. But there's something else that I think is very important to understand here. And um, uh, I'll just, let's take a look at Genesis um, chapter 4, verse 10. Okay. In Genesis 4, verse 10, uh, speaking of Abel, the Bible says, uh, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood mm -hmm. crieth unto me from the, from the ground. ground. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the context of this is Cain and Abel, the mm -hmm. sons of Adam and Eve, and they are told to worship God. They're coming to give offerings for God. And Abel goes along with what he's been told that he sacrifices a lamb. Cain, on the other hand, decides to bring the fruits of his hands, the works of his labor, mm -hmm. and basically, Abel, you know, that's not going to work. Cain, don't worry about me. And then as they uh, offer, Cain's uh, offering is rejected. Abel's offering is accepted. Mm -hmm. And Cain gets upset mm -hmm. at his brother. Mm -hmm. And even though he's remonstrating with him and, and loves him, Cain ends up getting so angry that he kills his brother. Mm -hmm. Persecution. Persecution. Yeah. And he kills his brother. There's the person that's relying on the works of his own hands. Right rather than on the offering of Jesus Christ and the Lamb. Mm -hmm. So the person that's relying on his works is killing the person that's relying on Jesus. Mm -hmm. See the connection now to mm -hmm. our yep. timeline right here? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Cain was worshiping. Yes, he was a worshiper. So it's not that he was like, you know, I, I don't want anything to do with God. He mm -hmm. brought a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So he was worshiping. Mm -hmm. Much like we saw with this pale horse mm -hmm. who is, you know, su supposedly worshiping, you know, like... This is in the name of God. We're, we're mm -hmm. doing this in the name of God, but it was absolutely against the will of God. Mm -hmm. so, so one of the points we need to see here is that the, the blood of those crying out under the altar mm -hmm. does not only represent the Protestant, you know, those who were mm -hmm. persecuted during the Protestant Reformation, but it really represents all the way going back to Abel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not just wasn't just people in the Protestant Reformation who, you know, symbolically are crying out, how right. long, O oh Lord? Right. Mm. This is taking us all the way back to the very beginning, to the very mm -hmm. first martyr, mm -hmm. which is Abel, which means the fifth seal, in a, in a sense, starts all the way from the, the beginning of time, mm -hmm. but brings us down with an emphasis mm -hmm. on the Protestant Reformation. I wouldn't say starts at the beginning of time. I say right, it takes right. us to takes the beginning us of time. back. It reminds it's, us yes, yes. of something that has been held off from yes. Abel's time. Something's been held off, been held off. In fact, it even comes out in the church where it says, I gave her space to repent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what you have in the Protestant Reformation is you have Martin Luther, you have Jerome and House and Wycliffe. They're all part of the church. Mm -hmm. They don't want to start another church. Yeah. Right. They're, they're remonstrating with their mm -hmm. brothers in the church and their sisters in the church. Well, that's what Abel did with Cain. He's remonstrating, hey, you know, you need the, the lamb, the lamb, the lamb. And these in, in the church history right here, these guys. So really what God is doing is he's connecting this story right here, this fifth seal right here to the story of Cain and Abel. Yeah. It fits perfectly. Yeah. Remonstrating, remonstrating, compromising, compromising, trusting in Jesus and the blood of the lamb, trusting the works of our own hands. And notice what happens. Even in the story, after Cain slays Abel, God comes to him, remonstrates with him, and then gives him time. Mm. Gives him time. Doesn't kill him. The, marks him. Gives him time. And so that's the same thing that's happening right here. There's the mm. time frame that's given. Even when the, uh, the reformers started preaching, mm -hmm. God gave more time, more time before we have a deadly wound that's inflicted in 1798. Mm -hmm. There's time being given here for more of the word of God, for those who are going to be slain, for the testimony of Jesus to, to draw, to draw. But there's an impending judgment. Mm. There's an impending judgment that has to sit yeah. and white robes need to be meted out. Yeah, so they're asking how long before you judge. Right. So this, this tells us something very uh, important to get is that during this fifth seal, 
uh, at some point within his fifth seal, mm -hmm. they're asking for judgment, but judgment is not yet being given. Right. They're saying, you know. How long, how long, yeah, how, how long? Yeah, how long, how long, how mm -hmm. long, which means, you know, how long dost thou not judge? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there comes a transition mm -hmm. where judgment does begin. Yes. Mm. And we see that in, in the next verse. Mm -hmm. So the next verse reads, mm. verse uh, 11. 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them. Mm -hmm. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season. And just remember that time period. Yes. A little season. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's really good news. As I'm thinking about, and James, I think you're thinking with me. Mm. Well, let you know. But that little <laughs> season is like, wow. Okay. But, but so, so here... It says white robes are given unto them. Now, uh, white robes are uh, a reward. It signifies purification, right? The signifies righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of Christ yep. Okay. So the question is, why weren't white robes given to them before? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Abel was mm -hmm. righteous. You know, think about all these guys that died in the name of yes. Christ. Why right. weren't white robes given to them? Yes. Why is it that after a certain time, yes. now white robes are given to them? Yes. And the answer is just profound. So let's go over to the book of Zechariah very mm -hmm. quickly. Zechariah chapter three, and um, maybe I can have one of you read from verses one to four. Zechariah three, verses. Zechariah is hard to find, but if you go yeah. to Matthew, Zechariah. the gospel of Matthew, and you just go back two books, you go Ma Matthew, Malachi, Zechariah. Yeah. Or if you have a computer, you can use Esau. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Zechariah three. Mm-hmm. And yeah. from what? One to four. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, the Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is this not, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I've caused thine iniquity to pass from thee, and I will clothe thee with change of raiment. Mm. Okay. So uh, according to what we've just read, right, here, here you have Satan accusing one of God's own. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then at some point God says, Okay, uh, I'm going to cause your iniquity to pass from you, and I'm going to change your raiments. So the change of raiments would be connected with iniquity passing from him. Mm -hmm. Purification, yep. right. cleansing. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. So when we take this back to Revelation, mm -hmm. and the the saints are asking, you know, symbolically speaking, because we know that, you know, these aren't really dead people speaking. This is mm -hmm. symbolism. Right. What God is showing us is that a judgment process begins for the dead. Okay. Mm -hmm. A judgment process begins yes. for the dead, in which a cleansing or purification happens that allows God to give them white, white robes. robes. Yep. And that would point us to what we call the investigative judgment. judgment. Huh. But, wow. and what's really powerful about this, that judgment is not taking place when Jesus returns. Right. Because even though they're judged, they have to wait. Mm -hmm. So this double confirms an investigative judgment. Because if this was the final judgment, where Jesus is coming and there's a final judgment, then white robes are given to every one of them and boom. But it says, but you must rest a little bit longer. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're going to Revelation 14 right. next, yep. right? Yep. You must rest a little bit longer till your brethren that should be killed as you, whether they will or not, we'll see, will be fulfilled. There's a little bit of time left to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So here we have this space of time from the beginning of the investigative judgment until those final yes. brethren go through an experience and, and Jesus returns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's incredible. So, yeah. So, so the people here, th this is to uh, signify to us that a judgment is coming mm -hmm. right under the fifth seal, mm -hmm. no judgment. And then suddenly they're given white robes, but they're told, wait a minute. Uh, there are others who are to receive these yes. white robes and mm -hmm. be killed as well. Yeah. Once that number is complete, mm -hmm the end comes. Mm -hmm. Once that number is complete, the end comes. Now, what's interesting about this is we're going to, I guess we need to jump ahead a little bit because when we understand that the judgment occurred, uh, that the judgment begins with the cleansing of the sanctuary, mm -hmm. right? That's the process of the judgment. Mm -hmm. And the everlasting gospel begins to go forward. Mm -hmm. Let's look at Revelation chapter 14. Well, let me say it this way. Yeah. 
Revelation chapter 14 is the fourth enlargement. We've got the seals, mm -hmm. the trumpets, and the seven, seven salvation signs. Mm -hmm. So in Revelation chapter 14, now we're just going to jump into this. We're not going to give the details. Right. But we're going to jump into this, and we're going to show the connection now yes. between Revelation 14 and this fifth seal. Yeah. So in Revelation 14, we have the gospel, mm -hmm. which would correlate with this white, I mean, excuse me, this... Um, what does it say there? White robes. The yeah. white robes. The white robes, yes. righteousness of Christ. We have the gospel. And then we have the hour of his judgment is yes. come. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so that's the judgment yeah. message. And, and those messages are 1840 to 1844, the yes. three angels' messages given. Is that after the little season? No. No. Okay. So okay, this is starting yeah. the little season. Okay. So, so you've, got, the, yeah. you've got 1840 to 1844. You've got this message being given. You've got the judgment being opened. And then you're going to have a little season coming after that. And that's why it says in verse... Uh, chapter 14, verse... 13? Let's look at verse 12. Okay. Verse 12 is the, is the closing off of, of the... Is the final part of the third angel's message. It says, here's the patience of the, of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Remember what they were being persecuted for? Yes. The word of God, God. Of God. and the yeah. testimony of Jesus, Jesus. right? Right. And now watch this. So... The three angels' messages go together. They go simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right at the end of the three angels' messages, right? I'm not talking about in time. I'm speaking in terms of where it's found in the scripture, mm -hmm. okay? Right after that, verse 13 says, And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Mm -hmm. Yea, say the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, mm -hmm. and their works do follow them. Yep. So before, before this time period, the dead are symbolically crying out, Lord, when are you going to judge? When are you going to judge? When are you going to judge? Rest. White robes. White robes. And then you find here that when the, when the judgment message begins, mm -hmm. there's a blessing to those who die now because they're not crying out. Yeah. Lord, how, no, judgment's yes. going on now. Yes. So blood is not crying out. Judgment's right. going on. Yep. Blessed are those who die. So between the, the, the fifth seal, the mm -hmm. ending of the fifth seal, basically is pointing us to the judgment that is to come. Right. Which, in which all the redeemed received white ro receive white robes. Mm -hmm. All those who are dead. And so what's yes. happening is in Revelation 5, excuse me, in Revelation's fifth seal, you have the intimation, the white robes, the crying out, Rest for a little season. In Revelation 14, it expands upon that. You have the everlasting gospel. The hour of judgment is come. Well, I didn't actually say that in the fifth seal, but now it's saying it. The hour of judgment is come. And blessed are the dead that die in the Lord. Yeah. You'll receive white robes. You'll rest for a little while. Blessed are those that die in the Lord. Yes. Why? Because they're receiving white robes and they're resting for a little while. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see? So the connection is right there. Yeah. The two is right there. Now, going back to chapter five, chapter six in the fifth seal. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the Reformation era. And what we're doing now is we're moving from Sardis into Philadelphia in the fifth seal. We're moving from Sardis, which is the Reformation era. The, ref the reformers came and they recovered what? The word of God. Mm -hmm. The morning star of the Reformation, John Wycliffe. And what did he do? Translate the Bible. That's into the English language. Right. And they recover the word of God. And then it talks about how that in a loud voice, white robes are talked about in verse 11. White robes would, would point to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The altar would point to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. What, was their, what was the main focus of the reformers? To preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Then, as they moved on, as we move on through history, these reformers, they lived, they contributed, they died, they lived, they contributed, they died, but the Reformation didn't stop with them. It went right into this movement called the Millerite Movement, 1840 to 1844, the Millerite Movement. Moved in. And that movement is bringing us to the time of judgment, the actual time of judgment. And in that movement, we move into the next seal, which is going to help confirm the time frame of all of this by giving us some other... Uh, confirming signs in the sun, moon, and stars. So the Millerite movement would correspond then with the sixth church, Philadelphia. Yes, yes. Absolutely. Yes, but we're not there yet. Right. We're still right. in the fifth church. We're yes. still in Sardis. Yes. And we're still correlating the uh, symbols right here that are taking place in, under the fifth seal with Sardis and with, of course, the future message mm -hmm. of the judgment. Mm -hmm. All right. So I have a question. So white robes, um, in, in this case, it's the gospel 
Is it also the righteousness of Christ? It's the same thing. Those are the same. You just said the same thing. Okay. The gospel is the righteousness of Christ. Okay. It is. It's the good news of Christ, our righteousness. Mm. That's the gospel. Okay. So we're taking, we're taking some liberty here to expand these phrases and see their worth, mm. you know, to really spread them out and then connect them with all these different areas, mm. you know, in the, in, the, in the book of Revelation, in the Old Testament, and show the, the fullness mm -hmm. of what this symbol is. Because here's what's happening. John is being given the book of Revelation. It is a distillation of the entire Bible. Only God could do that. Mm. Right. So God takes 66 books, well, 65 without Revelation, mm. and he takes those books and he just says, <laughs> Revelation. He juices it down. And juices it down. <laughs> this is just this juice. I mean, this is, that's a good way to describe it. So you just take a little glass of that stuff and you're just mm -hmm. powered mm -hmm. for the whole day. And so every word has meaning. Mm -hmm. Every word has to be uncapped. And what's in there? Wow, look at that. You know, we unseal this and there's just all this stuff coming out of here. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? We go to the rest of the Bible. Mm -hmm. the New Testament, the Old Testament. We go to the rest of the Bible, we look up these phrases, we make the connections, and we let it just <clears throat> absorb into our minds. And so this is what we're doing here, is we're making connections to the Old Testament, we're making connections to the seven churches, and we're making connections forward to areas we haven't gone yet, because we haven't gone to the seven salvation signs yet. But when we get there, mm -hmm. we're going to see judgment. When we get into the seven salvation signs, we're going to see white robes. We're going to see the connections being made here. And again, God is just going to repeat and enlarge, repeat and enlarge, repeat and enlarge. Give us a, a fuller picture. Mm -hmm. So I guess a little recap would be good just to make sure that it kind of gets sealed. Absolutely. In, in mm -hmm. here. Yep. I think it would be good for us to do a recap. Let's do it, Ivor. All right. So you're going to recap? Me? <laughs> 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 no, we got to we got to do that later. So you take notes right now. Yep. Take notes cuz it's coming back to you. Yeah. Go for it. <laughs> so again what we're looking at with the fifth seal, mm -hmm. fifth seal is going to correspond with the fifth church. Mm -hmm. It's going to point us to the time period of the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to uh, bring us into the understanding that a judgment was uh, there was a judgment being asked for. When will this judgment occur? And then we see that there's a time uh, pre-judgment and then the judgment beginning. Okay. We're going to see that this judgment, uh, is, is going to begin with the dead mm -hmm. begins with the souls under the altar. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's why it says their blood is crying out. Yes. Mm. I mean here now, this is really interesting. I think it's a really good point for us here. It says that they cried out with a loud voice, mm -hmm. but in Genesis chapter four, it says that Abel's blood, blood. cries out. Mm -hmm. And so that's the clarification we need to have right. because we understand that when you're dead, you're dead. Right. So, so Genesis four is instructing us on what it means that they're crying out. Yes. They're dead and crying out. Mm -hmm. And then Genesis four tells us, wow, not only does it tell us that, but it also has these amazing correlations with the sequence of history right here, mm -hmm. because Cain trusted in his works and that's what the churches come to do. And Abel trusted in the lamb. And that's what we've got with the white horse rider. Yeah. And you've got those who trust in the blood and those who are pale. Yeah. Who aren't trusting any blood, whatever, and they're mm -hmm. completely gospel less. And then when Abel realizes that Cain's sacrifice isn't accepted by God, he he demonstrates, he not demonstrates, but he entreats his brother. And what does his brother do? Kills him, gets angry with him and kills him. Mm -hmm. So you've got persecution, the persecuting church. You've got a compromising church, a persecuting church, a, a bloodless church, and then you've got Abel representing the white horse. And so the whole point is when that voice says, how long do you not judge? That takes us all the way back to Cain's time. Mm -hmm. That takes us back to the beginning. And that makes sense because the judgment is inclusive, even of Abel. Mm -hmm. The judgment is inclusive of everyone all the way from the beginning. Absolutely. And that's going to be crucial to understand when we get into Revelation chapter seven. Mm -hmm. um, but what's also interesting is that uh, Cain receives a mark because mm -hmm. of his rebellion. Wow. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, how about that? Uh, and as we, you know, again, oh move forward in the book the of Revelation, Mark. we're going to see wow. that those who do as Cain mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. are going to be marked. There's mm -hmm. going to be a death decree, yes. right? And, uh, and those who actually par partake in that death decree, those who side with that death decree mm -hmm. um, will be marked, mm -hmm. will be marked. And they'll be marked for the same reason that, that you know, mm -hmm. that Cain was marked. It was a sign of his 
uh, rebellion mm -hmm. against God. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. and, and of course, never... God marked, you know, the Bible says God marked Cain to protect him as well. But you think about mm -hmm. the reason he received that mark was mm -hmm. because of his rebellion. Yes. Was because of an evil action that mm -hmm. he did. So there's an amazing parallel there as mm -hmm. well. Um, and so again, we see this fifth seal. This fifth seal is a pre-judgment seal, letting mm -hmm. us know that there was a time of no judgment, and now we, we see the judgment coming. White robes are given unto those who are crying out for them. Mm -hmm. They've been just, dead. they've been, their, their iniquity, something about their iniquity mm -hmm. has been blotted out, yes. which is what the cleansing of the sanctuary is all about. Yes, and, that, and, that, and then it, it, a double confirmation of this, rest for a little season. Yes. Mm. So this isn't happening right when Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. You see, they've still got to rest. There's still going to be some persecution. Sleeping. Yeah, there's That's still right. going to be some persecution coming up. So they're still sleeping and there's still some time coming up where there's other brethren that are faithful to God, that are holding to the white horse and yes. his rider, that are following Christ. Mm -hmm. There's still some, some persecution that's going to take place that's going to put them in the same situation. For those who keep the, keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus yes, Christ. Christ. Mm. So blessed are they who die in this time period when the judgment is going on because they're not crying out, mm -hmm. how long before you judge? Mm -hmm. No, white robes are being given to them yes. in preparation for the second coming of Christ. All right, mm. our time is almost up. Wow. And we need to tell people where they can send their questions. SSS at 3ABN.org. Org. You know, Jason, you've been taking some furious notes here, buddy. <laughs> We've been talking, 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 and you've been writing, writing, writing. So when we come back for the quiz, uh -oh. we know who to turn to. <laughs> <laughs> Close us out with a word of prayer, would you? All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day of study in your word. Thank you for uh, allowing uh, Pastor Rafferty and Pastor Myers to break this down for us in, in a form that we can understand. Mm -hmm. uh, and hopefully we will be able to repeat in the next uh, program. Um, please uh, be with us as we uh, depart and help us to retain what we've studied. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Now we're seeing this connection right here. We're seeing that we've got these four horses that take us from the apostolic age all the way through to the through the dark ages, the persecution, the compromise, the dark ages, which leads to a misrepresent, misrepresentation of God's character, and therefore will eventually lead to atheism. Then we see the judgment. Mm -hmm. And we're going to move right from this seal. We're going to move right.